modern day Cairo. In the Egyptian National Museum, behind a protective case, there sits a chair. Dubbed the Golden Throne, this exquisitely handcrafted artifact is unique in all the world. Egypt, 1922. Archaeologist Howard Carter and his team have been searching the Valley of the Kings for years in hopes of finding the as yet undiscovered tomb of an ancient Egyptian king. But Carter's time is running out. For although signs point to him being close to reaching his goal, his sponsor, Lord Carnarvon, has begun to lose enthusiasm. However, Lord Carnarvon has agreed to provide funding for one more season, after Carter had gone so far as to offer financing the next year's excavation himself. Then, on November 4th, his workers found and exposed a single step that had been cut into the valley's bedrock. It was the first indication of a discovery that would become a worldwide media sensation. The tomb of Tutankhamun. After uncovering some more descending steps and part of a sealed doorway, Carter sent a message back to England congratulating Lord Carnarvon and informing him that they were awaiting his arrival at the dig site before they would break the seal and open the tomb. On November 26th, a small party that included both Carter and Carnarvon opened a second sealed door that revealed a room filled with treasures. Found underneath another piece of furniture in this room, or antechamber, was the Golden Throne. Made from multiple pieces of wood that were fitted together, this armchair is completely covered in sheet gold with many patterns and images chased or inlaid into it. This elaborate scene, located on the front panel of the backrest, is decorated with silver, faience, and colored glass, and features the young King Tut and his wife, Ankh Sanamun. The surface of the throne also contains numerous figures often found in ancient Egyptian art and culture. The base itself was made to resemble a lion, a symbol of both power and kingship. Here, the protective goddess Wadjet is represented as a pair of winged serpents, which form the armrests, both of them wearing the combined crown of a unified Upper and Lower Egypt. While the cobras on each side wear either the crowns of Upper or Lower Egypt, respectively. Along the back, there are four uri, which symbolize sovereignty, royalty, deity, and divine authority. Although most certainly a masterpiece, as well as a splendid example of ancient Egyptian craftsmanship, the term throne may be a misnomer, since it's likely that it was actually an auxiliary royal seat for the boy king. There are certain things found on the chair which contribute to this theory, like the fact that a large portion of the scene on the front of the chair is an image of the Aten, the main religious symbol during the reign of his father, Ankenaten. This is strange because the worship of the single god Aten was abandoned during Tut's rule. Another odd occurrence is that some of the cartouches still contained his original name, Tutank Aten, while others had been updated to Tutank Amun. It seems unlikely that discrepancies like these would be overlooked on an official royal throne. Still, one can easily imagine him sitting in full regal splendor, ruling over his subjects, or receiving foreign dignitaries in a stately manner.